Hi everyone, and welcome to our video on where we will pivot one time in a simplex method problem. So, in the previous videos, so it's all a race now because, well, sometimes it will freeze on me if I don't just restart it. Um, we're, we're doing this long process, and in the very first video of this simplex method stuff, we did the whole solve the problem. So it took a long time, and now I hope these little pieces are helping with figuring out this long problem. All right, but in the problem that we have, we are, we, it's like we had something like this and we already converted it to a simplex tabla, and then now we're going to do the pivoting step. Okay, so it says a maximized problem has been converted. Oops, that's not the one. This is what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're doing the simplex step. Okay, so the pivot. So a maximized problem has been converted to a simplex tabla. Determine the pivot row and the pivot column, and then pivot one time read the solution after the one pivot okay so we're only pivoting once so in, in case so we might not be doing the whole problem like we did the very first video just one pivot all right so let's break it down so determine the pivot row and the pivot column so i'm just going to call that number one let's put it right here okay so on these we we actually do this first and then we would do this second so the pivot column is found by looking at the most negative in the bottom row. So it's negative six is the most negative. So that means it's column one. Okay, so we've got column one. And then here we'll put the uh, row. Okay, so now that I know it's this first column, I'm gonna take our numbers here our, our constant value, so this, this is our constant, and you can, you can put C if you want to, so we're going to take the constant and divide it by the entries in this column, in the pivot column. Okay, so we've got 100 divided by 4, which would give us 25, and then we have 40 divided by 2, which gives us 20. And whichever one is the smaller one, which is 20 in this case, is where we would pivot. So this two, and this is our pivot row. Okay, so that's where we're pivoting. So it, this is pivot row two, column one. Okay, so we found that. All right, and then now we need to actually do the pivot. And and they, they wrote it like this one other time, they might word it like this, it, pivot element is, and they can only do this if it's, um, the only one that's that's there, this is the only one, but pivot element is two. Okay, so just in case, I'm gonna keep this box, I think that's more common. All right, so now we want to actually do the pivot. All right, since I've already scribbled on that, I am gonna rewrite it. So X1, X2, S1, S2, Z, and then four, one, one, zero, zero, 100. There's my constant, let me label that two. Two, three, zero one zero forty and then negative six negative five zero zero one zero all right so there is i'm just rewriting it and then we know where we're pivoting let me even highlight it sometimes i'll just do like a highlighter you might see that once you start doing the homework okay so that's the pivot element and when we pivot we're going to use this pivot row to help us make the four so we want this here and this here to become zero. So both of those need to become zero. This row will stay the same when we start to rewrite it. So we can, and we could even just set that up right now also. Okay, so let's, let's do it like this, where I'm saying, okay, so the pivot row will stay the same. And my goal will be to make directly above it and below it, or however many different, so all other elements, so in case it's got like 10 rows, you would want nine rows, then that would be zero involved with those elements. Okay, so the, the zero and zero right there. Okay, so that's what we want. So I'm just kind of setting up what is desired. Okay, and to make this happen, we do row operations just like we would with regular matrices when solving systems of equations. Okay, so I want, I want this four to become a zero using this row two. So I can't, I, I can't use row three 
that that is not going to help in the long run. Okay, so using this row two. Okay, so I'm going to say then. So this is my. This is what's going to do it. It looks like if I multiply row two by two and then we do subtraction, that would make that happen. So I'm going to do R one minus two of those row twos. So row one four minus two times two would be four minus four, and that would be zero. Okay, so there, there's that match. Okay, so, and at this point, this is where I would go ahead and just do it. Okay, so we're saying 4 minus 2 times 2 is 0. Okay, then moving on. 1 of these minus 2 of those, so that would be 1 minus 6 would be negative 5. And then you've got 1 of those, which is 1, minus 2 times 0 would be just 1. And then we've got 0 minus 2 of those 1, so 0 minus 2 would be negative 2. 0 minus 2 times 0 would be 0. And then we have 100 minus 2 times 40, so that would be 100 minus 80. So that would simplify to give us 20. Okay, so that's, and we could, we could use some scratch work to the side. I think it usually is with nice enough numbers where I think just saying it in words is the the easiest way to do it i hope it is okay so now that we've we've converted that we also have to do it to row three so row three is going to become again we want to use row two to make that negative six right there zero well i think if we multiply row two by three and then add these two rows together that would make that happen so i'm going to say row three should become row three plus three row two Okay, and then just again, be very careful with this. So I've got negative 6 plus 3 times 2. Yeah, that is 0. Good. And then now I need to be extra careful on all these others. All right, row 3 right here, I've got negative 5 plus 3 times 3 is 9. So that would become a positive 4. So negative 5 plus 9 is positive 4. Both of these are 0, so 0 plus 0 is, is 0 again. Then we've got 0 plus 3 times 1. So 0 plus 3 would be 3. And then in our z column, we have 1 plus 3 times 0 is 1. And then the last one, we have 0 plus 3 times 40 would be 120. Okay, so 0 plus, yep. Okay, and again, the arithmetic usually isn't too bad. It's just they, there are a lot of steps, so just be careful. Okay, so anyway, so this this is our this is actually the we only needed to pivot this once. All of these are are non-negative. All non-negative. So that means we we can now read the solution for real. Can read solution. If they were not all non-negative, we technically would need to pivot again, but in this problem it it said to only pivot one time anyway. Okay, so and then from there we can we could read a solution. It just might not be the final solution. All right, so let's let's use what we did. So this was from a previous video where we know how to read the solution. Um, I'm going to use blue to show some important stuff. So I've got this column has one non-zero. So I'm finding those columns first. This column has one non-zero, and this column has one non-zero. So those three columns are the non-zero ones. And so what we've got, um, so I kind of wrote a little, that, that thing there might take up some space. But what we can do with these three right here in the blue is we have, okay, so going in order, we're saying 2x1, so that's this middle, 2x1 equals that far right constant. And then from there, we can solve and get x1 is 20. Okay, so there, there's that. And then we can use, let's just keep it going in order. This is 1s1 equals that far constant, which is already solved for. So s1 is equal to 20. And then z has 1z in it, so that would be z equals, and then the far constant is 120. So there's those three. And then the columns that have multiple non-zero entries. 
are instantly assigned to be the variable equals 0. So x2 equals 0, s2 equals 0. OK, and then now we can write them all out. All right, so we've got in order x1 is 20, um, x2 is 0, s1 is 20, s2 is 0, and then z is 120. And there it is. OK. OK, so we found the final answer. Done. OK, so this was a pivot once. So it is row operations, just lots of little arithmetic going on. And then once you have it, well, then it's back to one of those other main steps in the giant setup to all of this. All right, so that's it. OK, so we'll put a pause on this. We'll, we, we got another one, pivot once. But let's, let's do that in a different video. So if you want to try it um, on your own, go for it. And then you could fast forward that video. All right, but that's it for now. So if you do have questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.